Welcome to Making Video Games with Python Lesson 13. In this video, we're going to explore more of this concept of working with an object's coordinate variables to position it on the screen, as well as how to check to see if an object is on the screen or off the screen. Now, before we dive into code, I feel like I need to explore this a little bit more with you. Uh, the coordinate system of the video game. So the top left corner has a value of 0, 0. So an x value of 0 and a y value of 0. That's up here. As we move towards the right, the values of x increase. As we move down, the y values increase. So again, th this is natural. To go to the right, the x increases. To go to the left, the x values decrease. This is different. We're used to having y values increase as we go up and they decrease as we go down. So again, with practice, you'll get this. The other thing I want you to kind of acknowledge is the fact that the game has a width. So that means that the x value at this side is game.width and the y value on this bottom side is game.height. So acknowledging these different uh, dimensions are going to be crucial when deciding um, where something is on the screen. So now let's get to code. So for this particular video, we're going to work with the ring animation. So again, this is a 8 by <clears throat> 8 by 8, giving us 64 uh, pictures on the screen. And before we go any further, let's see what the dimensions are. So it's a 512 by 512. Again, that's key to when we create an animation because uh, we got to provide the width and height for each one. So let's say rings equals animation. Images slash slash ring two dot PNG. There's 64 of them. We have to associate it with the game. And, well, you know, I'll do it like this. <laughs> 512 divided by 8. And then 512 divided by 8. Now, I might say, why did I, did, why did I do 8 instead of 64? We did 3 up here. Well, remember, this is supposed to be the width of each picture. So if the whole image is 512 and there's 8 pictures across, that means that each of these pictures is an eighth of that 512. So we divide by 8. Okay. Uh, and at this point, let's just simply draw the ring just to make sure that it's working. All right, great. So the ring is there. So we want to position the ring off the screen on the right side. So I'm going to change the ring's x value first to be equal to the width of the game, because I want you to see where it gets positioned. So you can see here, here's the ring. It's at the width of the game. Now, if I want to push it a little further off, then I can simply add a little, increase that x value a little bit more. So I'm going to increase it by 100. The other thing I want to do is to have the ring move on its own. So we're going to use our old friend set speed, which requires a speed and an angle. And now what should happen is that the ring should move. Now I was, I was about to hit F5 to run my program, and then I was going to start screaming. I was like, why is it not moving? Remember, in order to move an object when you use set speed, you actually have to tell it to move. Now the other thing you'll notice too is that I don't put the words true like I did in Zombie Thanksgiving. Remember, the parameter of true means that the particular object should be bouncing around the screen. Well, we don't want the ring to bounce. We just simply want it to move. And there it is. We can see the rings moving across the screen. Um, I know I dodged it there for a second, but the idea is to actually collect the coins. But what you'll see is that once the ring flies through once, it kind of disappears. It doesn't come back. So what we're going to do is that we're going to recycle that image. Or in other words, when the image goes off the screen, we're going to push it back to the other side again. 
So hopefully you noticed in, in the way I said it, this requires an if statement. We need to check if the rings x value. Now, if you recall, the left side of the screen over here has an x value of 0. So that's what we're going to be checking for. So we're going to check to see that the x value is less than, I could put 0 here, but I'm going to put a little bit more to kind of make it proportionate with where it starts. So we started 100 units past the width of the screen. Well, let's also detect it for 100 units to the left of the screen. Now, if that's the case, we want to position it back to the other side. So let's do that. And I'm simply going to grab this line of code. <clears throat> so the ring is moving. It's moving, it's moving. And the minute it goes off the screen, we should see it pop back up. Now, the one thing you'll notice is that it pops up back in the exact same spot. Well, that's not good. So let's handle that. And we can handle that by simply uh, producing a random variable, ran int, and let's say between 200 and let's say 350. And then let's assign the ring's y value to that random number. Now I could have done, <coughs> excuse me, I could have done this all in one shot. I could have simply done the ran in directly here, but I wanted to make it uh, more explicit that we're producing a random number and then that random number is being given to uh, this y value. All right, so as we play the game, uh, we notice that here it's in the middle. And notice that the ring came up a little higher. All right, great. But the thing that's missing out of the game now is the fact that we need some pipes around this. So let's go ahead and uh, program that part in of bringing the pipes in. And these are the pipes, pipe bottom and pipe top. And we'll do this right here. We'll say pipe top is equal. This is not an animation. Pipe top is just an image. So you can see here that we can combine animations uh, with regular images to kind of create a full game. And don't go autopilot. An image is very simple. All it needs is the game at the very end. And let's do pipe bottom here and pipe bottom here. All right, so what I want to do is I want to take advantage of the fact that the ring is already moving. The only thing we need to do is we need to position the pipes wherever the ring is moving. So we're going to take advantage of using the move to command to move the pipes to wherever the ring is. So we'll say pipe top <clears throat> dot move to. And we're going to move it to the rings x and the rings y. And let's do the same thing for the bottom pipe. And let's see that. Again, it's not going to look great, but at least we'll see. The pipes are moving with the ring. The only thing we do need to do now and hopefully you'll see when it cycles back through again, that wherever the ring is, the pipes are right there along with it. So we can take the Y value of the, of the top pipe and simply subtract a little bit from it. Let's say we subtract 200. Hopefully that's not going to be too much, <laughs> too much of an opening. And then the same, <coughs> same thing with the bottom pipe. Uh, let's add a little bit to it, and that should create us a gap. So wherever the ring is, we're going to move the top pipe a little further up, and we're going to move the bottom pipe a little further down. Okay, great. So we can see here the pops are now uh, the pipes are now moving. Uh, there's a little gap, and let's see where this this one popped up a little lower. Uh, but hopefully you can see this looks awkward down here. 
So we're going to solve that next. So the way you, the order in which you draw things in your game determines if something's on top of something else. So what we're going to do here is we're going to simply move the join of the bar to below where the pipes are. And now the game looks good. So we're just going to cycle through one more iteration. Let's see where the pipes pop up. All right, so it almost popped up in the same spot. All right, so let's go back to our presentation. Let's review what we've done. So in this particular video, uh, we explored a lot about uh, the coordinate system of our game and how the X and Y uh, variables of an object can be used to position things on and off the screen. Uh, we also saw how we can make a decision to decide if an object is off the screen and then position it back somewhere else so it can kind of recycle the image. So hopefully you're excited about completing Flappy Birds and enjoy.